I need to put together another Windows 7 desktop to use at my workplace for everyday tasks. So I figured I'd try to scrounge up enough hardware between stuff I have here at home and stuff I have laying around at work to try to put something together. I got a brand new copy of Windows 7 Pro 64-bit because let's face it, trying to take Windows 8.1 into my work environment where nobody's familiar with it, that's going to be a disaster. So we're sticking with Windows 7 until it, its support cycle runs out more than likely. I have a 128 gig a Pacer Industrial SSD. This came from work. We had a couple of these that were bought for this purpose actually. Uh, just finally got around to digging up the rest of the hardware. I have a set of SSD mounting rails that actually came from a Kingston SSD upgrade kit that was used in another machine at work. But this will come in handy for this particular system. I have a GeForce GT240 card, Gigabyte branded, came out of my workshop home theater computer, and also this uh, Gigabyte G41M ES2L motherboard that has a Pentium dual core E5500 on it and a big aftermarket Dynatron cooler. Four gigs of, um, I can't remember the brand of the RAM itself, I actually added these Vantech heat sinks on here after I bought it because it was just cheap stuff and I wanted to overclock the crap out of it so I figured I'd put some heat sinks on it but um, yeah the RAM was just some cheap stuff that I got out of the local computer store. I have a Acbell workstation power supply one of these old 550 watt deals from like 2005. This was in that home theater PC as well and it's already got all the adapters on it that I need to plug it into that board. I have this old e-machine what is this? Uh, W2247 case. I'm going to try to clean this up and, and uh, put all this new stuff into it. I actually had this case out somewhat recently, maybe last summer. I don't remember exactly when, but I was trying to make a another computer out of this using some old HP uh, parts I had laying around and it didn't work out because the Asus motherboard has something wrong with it. So we'll take another look at that in just a second here. Yeah, I kind of re remember this thing now. It had the Asus M2N68LA motherboard that came from an HP DX2450. It actually does run, but the problem it has is it keeps saying that there's a CMOS checksum error no matter how many times you update the BIOS or change the battery or you know even check the voltage from the battery to the chip all that stuff is fine but it's just not working so I'm thinking that the uh, the chip itself is bad and it's not worth fixing the board it's just an old um, I think it's an Athlon X2 4450B so I'm just going to salvage the RAM, the CPU, the cooler, SATA cables and anything else that might come in handy. Uh, also that brand new battery that I put on there. But this has a, a I think this is an old Dell power supply that I put in here. That's going to come out. And there's two optical drives in here because one of them is the original e-machine drive with the unique front bezel meant for this case. That's just being used as a, a filler plate basically because I've got a, um, a modern DVD burner in the slot below it. Yeah, no hard drive. I was kind of hoping there'd be some in there. And then this RAM, I'm not sure what this is. It's probably some, something small that I put in there just for test purposes. Holy crap. Well, that's a 2 gig chip. It's this one. One gig. So now they're mismatched. Still, I was only expecting it to be maybe 512 meg for the pair. So now I know where that 2 gig chip went that I was looking for a while back. Anyway, let me get this junk out of this case and start putting the other stuff in. Well, I've got everything installed except for the power supply. And after working with this case for a little bit, I really started to like it a lot. It's really well made for an older OEM case. 
the expansion slot covers have little tabs on them that kind of lock them in place and hold them there while you're putting the screws in, which really comes in handy. I don't see that very often, even on cases that are really expensive, actually. Hard drive mounting system is pretty nice. It's got a cage that comes out with a single thumb screw. And there are little spring clips in there that kind of hold the drive locked into position while you're putting the screws in that. And the motherboard standoffs even have that little little stand-up nub on one of them that uh, holds the motherboard in place while you're putting the screws in. And it's, you know, those are things I've really only seen on a few higher-end cases. The metal is a good thickness. This case is not flimsy one bit. It's got good weight to it. The only thing that kind of gives it away that, that it's pretty old, uh, besides the old USB ports and the floppy in the front, is the 80 millimeter cooling fan. However, a lot of modern hardware, if you're not using a giant video card or anything, it's not going to generate any more heat than the original stuff that was in here, probably even less in a lot of cases. This originally had an Athlon XP in it, and I know those could get pretty hot because I had a lot of them back in the day. <clears throat> but if you're using something even newer than this, like an Ivy Bridge platform or something, uh, this would be more than enough to cool that. In fact, I wouldn't even be using this video card if it wasn't for the fact that I needed the DVI for the monitor. And another thing that, uh, the reason I use this particular hardware, this all worked out perfectly because my bench PC at work has the exact same motherboard and an almost identical e-machine case. It's a little bit different color scheme. In fact, it was uh, in a prior video of mine, probably a couple of years ago by now. Um, I think it was... Uh, a little bit newer. It had a uh, what was it? A socket 775. I, th I think it was a Celeron D motherboard that was originally installed in that case. But it had the same mounting setup on the hard drive, from what I can remember. So it's going to be kind of nice having two office machines with matching motherboards and almost matching cases. Uh, same SSD in both machines. And I'm also going to have, eventually, a pair of GeForce uh, GT610 or something along those lines. Just some, some basic video cards. And this old 240 will just be a spare. But anyway, I think I've been rambling on this long enough. I'm going to go ahead and put this power supply in and get Windows installed. That was kind of handy that that power supply was actually used with that motherboard in a different case. So the wires are already tied in the proper position, pretty much exactly where they needed to be. But I might clean that up a little bit more before I take it in and put it in the office. But I'm going to try to power this thing up now. And the monitor I'm using is the actual monitor that's going to be going with it uh, over to my workplace. This is a Samsung 2494SW, I think. Yeah, this is one of those ones that I had to fix the wire that was broken off the backlight lamp. So the screen isn't perfect on it, but I think it's going to be a nice upgrade from the 19-inch the uh, 5x4 monitor that we have there now. The only concern I have right now about this is if I have the power LED plugged in correctly, but I'll find out. Hmm. You know what? Something is wrong. Something is very wrong. So let me take a look at the uh, front header here and see if I got something plugged in wrong. Try number two. Tends to work better when the power button is plugged into the power header instead of the reset header. Alrighty then. I don't remember the uh, fans being nearly that noisy on this computer last time I used it, so hopefully I can slow those down, because that's uh, quite excessive. Hmm. Yeah, that system fan, that thing is ridiculous. 3300 RPMs. Hmm. I'm going to have to do some... Uh, fan swap once I get this thing into the into the office because that's way too noisy for us. <clears throat> but I think uh, regardless I want to put the Windows disk in and get moving with that at least. 
All right, I've got Windows installing. So far, that's working properly. I ended up unplugging that case fan to quiet this thing down a little bit, but it's still way too noisy uh, because of the uh, power supply fan and probably the video card fan and CPU cooler. Uh, once the video driver is installed, that fan will slow down, but then the other two are still going to be noisy. So probably what's going to end up happening is I'm going to either put the stock Intel fan back on there or put a noise reducer on this existing cooler and then change out that power supply for one of those green Antec power supplies that I've got several of laying around at work. That'll quiet this thing right down because it's got more than enough airflow so I'm not worried about the temperatures. In fact the last time I looked in the BIOS the CPU is at 19 degrees. Uh, so I've just got to wait for this to get installed and also have to put the LAN driver on a USB stick because I found when I installed Windows 7 on my other work machine today with the same board in it the onboard LAN controller was not detected by Windows 7 so I'm going to go over to that machine over there and download that driver real quick while I'm waiting for this to install. This is what the new Windows 7 OEM envelopes look like. You've got to be really careful opening that sticker that goes across the, the top there because you could scratch the DVD if you're using a razor blade. And also these new COAs are extremely hard to read if you have bad eyes like I do. Um, you know, obviously I'm covering it up because the code is there, but the fonts that are used on there and that little blue background on the sticker makes it extremely hard to read compared to older Windows COAs that have used. So they're definitely cheapening up the packaging quite a bit for the OEM stuff. All I gotta do is install some uh, drivers and this thing should be just about ready to put the last couple programs on I need. It's kind of funny, the first thing I open up when I open up Internet Exploder is the Firefox download page. Because yeah, you know how it is. Get this thing installed. Get that nasty browser off here. I really wish that there weren't any websites that required Internet Exploder, but unfortunately uh, there are some things that we use at the office that don't work on any other browser, probably probably because of uh, uh, ActiveX or other things that are only part of um, the uh, Internet Explorer browser. So I'm going to change some settings on here, let's see, options, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that, options. Turn on the menu bar, turn on the bookmarks bar, and then change my tabs so that they're on the bottom where, I, where I'm used to having them. And then they'll take care of that. But I'm going to let Windows install some drivers so that my video card is functioning. And not much left to do after that other than to install uh, Office programs and a couple other things. Uh, it looks like Windows is already uh, in the process of getting something here. It's probably the video driver. It usually is the first thing that it does when uh, it finds that there's a network connection. Uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and let that restart. This monitor is weird how it. Um, it doesn't fill the screen when you have a lower resolution going into it. It must not have a very good scaler in it. Piece of crap Samsung monitor. Samsung makes some decent panels, but I just have never really cared for uh, a lot of their firmware that's in their monitors and the build quality in general. They've always used bad capacitors and stuff. So I'd much rather prefer to have a monitor that has a Samsung panel in it, but it's a different brand of monitor and you get the best of both worlds. But even then, AU, AU Optronics or LG, sometimes they have better quality panels too. All right. Wonder if I can actually. Wonder if it installed the video driver yet. 
Hmm, that looks like it hasn't. Computer. Now let's go ahead and activate Windows. Get that out of the way. All right. Hmm. Standard VGA graphics adapter. It'll probably pick itself up in a little bit here and start down, downloading the right driver. Usually it does. If not, I'll just do it manually. In fact, since that's a uh, NVIDIA card, I'm going to go ahead and just install the drivers off NVIDIA's website because the next card that goes in this machine is going to be another NVIDIA card. So I won't bother using the built-in Microsoft driver. Uh, Alright, let me take care of a few things here. Well, Windows has got a bunch of updates to install, so I figured I'd talk about a few things while this is going, just to explain a little bit more. As far as building, that part of the video is over, so if you don't like rambling, you can pretty much stop here. There's not much to, uh, much about the computer itself from this point on, but I just wanted a little bit of backstory on this. <laughs> you might remember... Oh man, was it a couple of years ago now probably, I had built a couple of those Pentium D BTX mini computers. Uh, uh, this, the system that this is replacing is actually the first of those two BTX computers that I built. And that computer is still being used to this day. In fact, it's running over there in the workshop right now, uh, running Windows XP and really only changing it for two reasons one because I wanted a Windows 7 machine and two because that BTX system is physically small and it's perfect for another dedicated task that we have that requires transporting the computer from place to place and I've got the shipping box for it still so it's perfect for that and I'll use this mini tower as the shop system since it's not going to be, have to be transported anywhere. The little mini PC was per perfectly capable of running Windows 7 but this just works out better. And the backstory on this eMachines case, this actually came from a friend of mine that I, I knew from high school and I haven't talked to him in quite a while but we're still in touch and this I believe was his dad's computer and his dad had recently, somewhat recently passed away and he brought this over and handed it to me and explained that it had a bad motherboard and stuff in it and it sat around for a long time and now it's finally got a decent set of hardware back into it and it's going to be put back to use so I think he would be glad to know that his old computer's got a new lease on life for quite a while now the only thing I'm going to do is take all these old stickers off because they're irrelevant now and give this case a good cleaning but it's definitely going to be a solid system for probably the next several years because I can't see us needing to upgrade from Windows 7 for a long time for that particular system. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention on this but you might notice it's quite a bit quieter now that the video drivers are installed but I'm still going to replace that case fan and that power supply in the morning make it a little quieter because even that that uh, Pentium D system uh, it could be a little noisy on hot summer days when the fan was running at full speed but for the most part this thing is noisier than that was so I'm going to take those extra steps to quiet this thing down and at least have it be as quiet as that little mini PC was but as far as the final test on this there's really not much I can show short of playing a video or a song or something and really I just I, I have to call it a night and let this finish doing its upgrades while I'm getting ready for bed because uh, it's Wednesday night and I've got to work in the morning so I gotta wrap this up but I basically just wanted to have a quick video of putting this together maybe talking about this particular case a little bit and uh, a little bit of a backstory, but I don't know, maybe I just felt like talking and used a computer build video as an excuse. So there you have it.